I'm Callum Brown for 74XX. Today I'm going to breathe some life back into this dull CRT tube with a device called a rejuvenator. Let's get started. So after my arcade collection review video from earlier this month, I decided I should get on implementing some of the repairs I intend to do in 2022. One of those things was to change the tube on the CPS2 cabinet, which has never looked very good. It was plenty bright, but I could never get the size of the image right, and changing the width capacitor on the chassis caused this cylinder warp, where things were skinny at the edges and wide in the middle. Additionally, there was a problem where it seemed to lose focus as it reached full brightness. I had this 25-inch Gold Star CRT sitting around in the garage for months and decided it was time to test it as a candidate to be the new tube for the CPS2. I removed the back and most of the electronics and set it up with another Wells Gardner K7000 chassis. The K7000 is among the most compatible of any chassis for tubes, and this one showed excellent geometry and good convergence, but the maximum brightness was quite low. Turning up the screen voltage or contrast knob or color cutoffs lit the whole screen, destroying the black levels, and turning up the color drives would just smear the color to the right. I'll set my camera to manual and take a few pictures of the best images I could get out of the tube before rejuvenating, so we can compare them later. CRT rejuvenators or restorers were common in the 60s and 70s, but maybe as materials improved, they weren't as needed on newer sets. Still, some models were made into at least the late 90s, like the Sencor CR7000, with the promotional material in denial about CRTs still leading the market in the early 2000s. Arcade enthusiasts will generally have one of these ancient 60s ones, however, and today I've borrowed a B&K Precision 467, a favorite among arcade repair guys for its simplicity and relatively low cost. To use a rejuvenator, you'll need a matching socket adapter. In this case, I have the CR23, which is quite common on both 19 and 25 inch sets. And I've already looked up the heater and G1 voltages, which you need to know going in. Before I begin, the chassis has been powered off, the tube has been discharged, and I'll remove the anode cap for good measure. I'll remove the neck board and attach the CR23 adapter from the rejuvenator. I'll rotate all of the controls fully counterclockwise, including the main knob to off. Finally, I set the G2 voltage to normal, and since I know my heater voltage will be 6.3 volts, I'll move the heater range knob to 4 to 7. Now I can plug in the rejuvenator and turn the main knob to set up. I'll set the heater voltage to 6.3 volts, which you can see on the first meter in red along the bottom. Next, I'll set the G1 voltage to 50 volts, which can be found on the second meter in black along the bottom. Next, I have to check all the lamps for leakage or shorts, but I can see they're all out, so we're good there. Now I'll switch the main knob to set cutoffs. The instructions here say to increase the cutoff until it rises one scale degree. Sorry, my hand blocked it during the close-up, but it's more clear on the blue adjustment. Now I'll flip the main switch to test and check the emission of the guns. It looks like red is good, green is firmly in the bad zone, and blue is marginal. Now, even though this unit is called a rejuvenator, it's generally considered a better option to use the clean and balance function, which is a little less harsh. So I'll leave the switch in that position. Cleaning or rejuvenating is a destructive process, removing material from the guns, and always carries the risk of damaging the tube permanently. So once the knob is in the restore position, I'll push the color buttons one at a time and hold it until the needle drops to 0.2. At least that's what the manual asks for. In practice, I found that the needle tends to jump around but trend downward and it will very quickly fall off to zero, so you have to watch carefully. As I repeat for the blue gun, you can see the sparking in the tube. The manual does not impose any time limit for the clean and balance procedure, but it does indicate that you should stop if the needle stops decreasing and the G1K short lamp is lit. My lamp is lit on and off, but the needle is still going down, so I'm willing to risk it. I didn't realize when filming this that the G1K short indicator stayed on, but you'll see that it resolves itself after a few seconds anyway. Okay, so once this has been completed for all three guns, I'll go back to setup and adjust the tracking again, then proceed to test and look at the results. 
Looking good, all three guns are in the good range now. I tried a second round of cleaning, but it didn't seem to have any more effect, so I'll just turn off the rejuvenator and reconnect the chassis. Don't forget the anode, or get ready for a light show and a trip to the ER if you're conductive. Turning on the chassis and my Neo Geo, I'm already seeing an improvement in the overall brightness. I'll go back to the color gradients in the Neo Geo test mode and see if I can increase the drives. Success, I can turn up the drives quite a bit more before the smearing starts. Let's take a look at some before and after comparisons. The Neo Geo logo in white is brighter and loses that blue cast from before. The title screen's background's dark blue stays about the same, but the number two is much brighter. Back in the color gradients test, it's pretty clear the entire gradient is much more visible, tracking well all the way down to the dark shades, and the rightmost block on each is much brighter. Finally, this in-game shot really shows how much the image has improved, especially on combined colors like yellow. Okay, with this tube all spruced up, I think it's gonna do very well in the CPS2 cabinet. Moving machines is always a bit of a pain since I have them right up against each other. First I removed the old tube, and after removing the tube, I realized that the lower bracket wasn't actually attached to the rest of the machine, which seemed a little dangerous, so I glued and screwed the wood, then screwed in the lower frame. Next, I removed the new tube from the plastic frame and got it in place. This new tube has a longer neck and it's actually quite a tight fit in there once the chassis is in place. Turning on the machine, everything is working fine. I use this old piece of furniture with a mirror all the time to make adjustments from behind machines. This particular K7000 chassis doesn't have a remote board, so I pretty much have to do it this way. Anyway, once the geometry adjustments were done, I'm left with a nice, bright, focused screen with improved geometry. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Special thanks to Tim for lending me the rejuvenator. Stay tuned for a few more videos already in the pipeline, and until next time.